In the dense, untamed forests of the Philippines, a mystery lay buried for tens of thousands of years. It was a secret hidden within a cave on the island of Luzon, one that would challenge everything we thought we knew about human evolution. In 2019, archaeologists uncovered fossilized bones and teeth of a previously unknown human species, one that was unlike anything ever seen before. A species so small, yet so distinct, that it forced scientists to rewrite the human story. Who were they? How did they arrive on a remote island? And could they have lived alongside modern humans? This is the story of Homo luzonensis, the enigmatic humans who defied all expectations. For years, archaeologists had suspected that ancient humans once lived on Luzon, but they had no proof. That changed in 2007 when a single foot bone was unearthed in Kalau Cave. The bone was incredibly old, dating back at least 67,000 years, making it the earliest direct evidence of human presence in the Philippines. But it wasn't until over a decade later, in 2019, that the real shock came. Additional remains revealed that this was not a modern human, nor even a known archaic human species. It was something entirely new. Scientists had just discovered Homo luzonensis. What made them so unique? Unlike Neanderthals or Homo sapiens, Homo luzonensis had a bizarre mix of ancient and modern traits. Their teeth were surprisingly small, yet their curved finger and toe bones hinted at climbing abilities, much like early human ancestors from millions of years ago. It was as if an ancient, tree-dwelling hominin had somehow survived on this island long after their relatives had disappeared elsewhere. But how did they get to Luzon? The island has never been connected to the mainland by land bridges, meaning the ancestors of Homo luzonensis must have crossed open ocean to reach it. Did they arrive by accident, swept away by a storm, or were they capable of some form of primitive seafaring? Either possibility challenges our assumptions about early human migration. Could these tiny island dwellers have possessed greater intelligence and adaptability than we ever imagined? Life on an isolated island like Luzon would have been both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, isolation meant protection from predators and competition with larger human species. On the other, it required immense adaptability to survive. Like Homo floresiensis, their close relatives from Indonesia, Homo luzonensis, likely underwent island dwarfism, shrinking in size over generations to conserve resources. But small size did not mean weakness. These humans thrived for tens of thousands of years. Fossil evidence suggests that Homo luzonensis lived alongside giant prehistoric animals, including a now extinct species of rhinoceros. Marks on ancient rhino bones hint that these small humans may have been butchers, using stone tools to carve up their prey. But did they hunt, or did they scavenge the kills of larger predators? Another intriguing question is whether they used fire. No direct evidence of fire-making has been found, but if Homo luzonensis had the intelligence to cross oceans, use tools, and survive in a challenging environment, could they have also mastered fire? If so, they may have been far more advanced than their small stature suggests. Life in such a unique and challenging environment might have also led to the development of complex behaviors. Could they have had rudimentary forms of social organization, using teamwork to find food and protect themselves? Could they have even had some form of simple language or communication system that helped them coordinate their survival efforts? If they did, this would push back our understanding of when and where human-like intelligence emerged. One of the biggest questions surrounding Homo luzonensis is what happened to them. Did they slowly die out due to environmental changes? Did a natural disaster, such as a volcanic eruption, wipe them out? Or did they meet a different fate, one linked to the arrival of Homo sapiens? Modern humans reached the Philippines around 50,000 years ago, just as Homo luzonensis was disappearing. Could we have outcompeted them for resources, or did we directly contribute to their extinction? Some scientists believe 
that wherever Homo sapiens went, other human species vanished soon after. Could Homo luzonensis have been one of our last victims in an ancient pattern of human dominance? And then there's an even wilder possibility. What if they didn't disappear at all? Indigenous legends from the Philippines speak of small, elusive forest beings that lived in the mountains and avoided contact with humans. Could these stories be echoes of real encounters with the last surviving members of Homo luzonensis? Could some of their genes still exist in the DNA of modern Filipinos? Recent research has suggested that ancient human populations in Southeast Asia were far more diverse than previously thought. If we could one day recover ancient DNA from Homo luzonensis, it could reveal connections to other mysterious hominins, such as the Denisovans, who also left traces of their DNA in modern human populations. Could it be that Homo luzonensis didn't vanish entirely, but instead merged with other human groups, leaving behind subtle genetic markers? The discovery of Homo luzonensis forces us to reconsider how we think about human evolution. For years, the dominant narrative was simple. Homo sapiens evolved in Africa, spread across the world, and replaced all other human species. But now, we know the truth is far more complex. Tiny humans lived on isolated islands, evolved in unexpected ways, and possibly even interacted with us. The human story is no longer a straight line. It's a web of diverse species, some of which may have been far more capable than we ever assumed. One major challenge remains. Scientists have not yet been able to extract DNA from Homo luzonensis. The hot, humid climate of the Philippines is not ideal for preserving ancient genetic material. But if we could recover their DNA, we might finally understand where they came from and whether they left a lasting mark on our genetic heritage. So, what do you think? Were they our distant cousins, lost to time? Or could they have lived long enough to share their world with modern humans? If you've made it this far, you're among the few who truly explore the depths of our ancient past. But did you know that 99% of our viewers aren't subscribed? If you love unraveling the mysteries of human history, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Let's continue this journey together.